some more measures of inequality. So one of the measure is Kuznets ratio. So what is Kuznets ratio? So for example, you take up the share of the richest 20% of the population and you take up the share of the poorest 40% of the population. So this is what it is. Share of richest X percent upon share of poorest Y percent. So in case if this ratio is increasing, it means the share of richer people is increasing in the income distribution and hence inequality is growing. That is one thing. Second is mean absolute deviation. Now what is mean absolute deviation? So you have seen the earlier two measures of inequality. One was range, another is Kuznets ratio. In range, you were taking only maximum and minimum. In Kuznets ratio also, you are taking up only the richest percentile of the population and the poorest percentile of population. But in case of mean absolute deviation, this is an improvement. Why? Because it is taking into account the entire income distribution. One thing. Second thing, in case of the distance of the income from the mean income is going to grow, it means inequality is going to grow. I'll show you with an example. It's an easy example. So just have a look at this. Just have a look at this. So you have, uh, there are two classes. One class of people are earning 5, other class of people are earning 10. In the first class there are 20 people, in the second class there are 5 people, let's say. So what is the mean income? Total income of the first class upon total income of the second class upon total number of individuals. This is going to give you the mean income which you will call as mu. Right. What is the total absolute deviation? How do you write this? Total absolute deviation. It will be like this. So you should write it this way. This way. So you have number of people in class 1 into absolute deviation of absolute deviation means income of class 1 minus mean. So how many people are there in class 1? 20. What is their income? 5. What is the mean income? 6. So the absolute deviation is 1. You are taking up the absolute value. How many people are there in the second class? 5. Income of people in the second class? 10. Mean income? 6. Absolute deviation? 4. So total absolute deviation while income is what? 20 into 1 plus 5 into 4. That is 40. That is 40. And if we want to take up the mean absolute deviation, then how do we do this? We are going to divide this total absolute deviation by the total income. Total income is total income is average income into number of individuals. What is the average income? 6. What is the total number of individuals? 25. And you have already calculated the total absolute deviation. So that is what 40 upon 625 is 0.267. So this is the measure. So you can compare it with the another income distribution. So in case if the uh, income distribution of some other region is going to be higher, you will say inequality is higher. There. Now, one important thing which you will have to remember is that it does not generally satisfy Dalton's principle. So remember this point. It doesn't generally satisfy Dalton's principle. Dalton's principle is what? If you are going to give income from the poorer class to richer class, inequality should increase. You have mean income. You take up two incomes above mean income or you take up two incomes below mean income and do the income transfer between them. Right? So there is not going to be any change in the mean absolute deviation. So there that principle fits. So it doesn't often work. Then Still better inequality measure is coefficient of variation. So what is coefficient of variation? So coefficient of variation gives you one advantage over mean absolute deviation. What is that? 
if the deviation of income from the mean income is higher it is going to give larger weight to that so that insensitivity problem which was there in the mean absolute deviation you don't find it here why are we calling that as insensitivity problem because in case of mean absolute deviation don't you think that you are giving equal weight to whether there is less deviation from the income or there is more deviation from the income but here it is not if there is more deviation from the absolute income the square is going to increase the value if there is less deviation from the absolute income it is not going to increase the value that much are you with me so in this way the insensitivity problem is solved why because in case of mean absolute deviation there was no square so the equal weight was given to to every income whether it is very far from the mean income or whether it is very near to the mean income but here in case if they are far the square is going to make sure that higher weight is given to that one thing second thing is that this is the coefficient of variations formula it is same as almost mean absolute deviation the only thing is that you are not taking up the absolute deviation here you are taking deviation of income from mean and making a square of it everything else is more or less same that is same so here i have multiplied one by n here so i need to i need to divide this by just mu here right and just the square of this here. are you with me all of you right so this is the coefficient of variation now in general it satisfies um, your uh, delta's principle why you take up any income level and you take up income of the poorer individual give it to income of uh, richer individual i mean add it to income of the richer individual the square is going to make sure that they, that this is going to increase this value is going to increase so it means coefficient of variation is going to satisfy delta's principle so while answering this kind of a question you might also be asked in the paper whether this particular measure of inequality does it satisfy an anonymity principle relative income principle population principle delta's principle so they might give you a simple scenario the way i have given for the mean absolute deviation you need to calculate it that way right so i hope this was useful to you thank you for that